Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. This week's tutorial comes courtesy of Brittany who sent me this photo and asked how to recreate it. So this week we are going to create stacked long shadow topography in Illustrator and it's actually a really quick and easy thing to do. So it's just to kind of add on to other things that you can do with this uh, particular technique. You can add different colors to it. You can make it one color like the example or you can even add kind of your own multi-tiered gradient, um, just a hue gradient over here. So we're just gonna jump right in and get started. So the first thing you wanna do is choose a font that's a little bit on the thicker side. So I'm using one of my favorite fonts called Evolith. There is, um, I do have an alternative if you're looking for a free font that's similar. So I'll list both in the video description. So make sure you click on the link located in the video description and all the information you need will be there. Okay, so I'm just gonna type out stacked long shadow type. And this is set in Evolith clean regular. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. If you wanna know my exact size that I'm using for this, let me make it a little bit smaller. Uh, we'll just use like 55 point, 55 point and just the default letting over here, which letting is your space between your lines. Okay, so we have it all typed out. If you wanna reserve a copy of this, if you wanna make things the same size later on or use a different phrase, just hold Alt, click and drag and that'll make a copy for you. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make this topography into shapes because that will allow us to apply this effect. So we're just gonna come up here and go Object Expand and hit OK. And now all of these are shapes, but they're all grouped together and we need each word grouped together. So if I click it right now, everything is selected. So in order to ungroup, you're just gonna hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC. And now when I click, I only select the one shape, but I need these all together. So instead of just regularly grouping them, since we're applying this kind of blend long shadow, we want to create compound paths out of these, which will enable us to create these shadows very quickly and very easily. So in order to do that, the keyboard shortcut is command in the number eight or control in the number eight. And just make sure it's selected before you do that. So I'm just gonna hit Command-8 on my Mac right now, or Control-8 if you're on a PC. Then I'm gonna rubber band select the next word, Command-8 or Control-8, and finish this off doing the same thing. Okay, so now that I have all of these together as compound shapes, now I'm just gonna select everything. I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and make a copy. I'm gonna click once and I'm just gonna drag these to the angle that I want the shadow to fall at. So if I want a really extreme shadow, it would be over here. If I want a more subtle shadow, it would be further away from my words. So I'm just going to do somewhere kind of in between here. So that looks good. Okay, so now we've got all of these that are kind of running into these ones. So we want to keep everything pretty straight. So we're going to start coloring them now just so we can differentiate which ones are part of our shadow and which one's part of our original word. So I'm going to go and choose two colors from my color palette over here, my default swatches. And if you don't have swatches showing up like I have right here, you can get to these by going by clicking on this little um, little menu drop down right here, just click it, go open swatch library, choose default swatches, and I'm using the default print swatches. So just click that and you'll get the same kind of swatches showing up for you. So I'm gonna choose two colors and the two colors I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna stick to this example, kind of a pink and a purple. So I'm going to choose every other one. So right here I'm gonna use stacked and then shadow. And we're just gonna color those this bright pink for this example and then for long and type right here I'm going to choose maybe this dark purple and then we're gonna do the opposite over here so since we have pink um, set as our stacked in shadow this time stacked in shadow is gonna be this purple and all I have to do is click hold shift select shadow and then hit I on your keyboard for your eyedropper and just select this purple color and now we're gonna do the same thing click hold shift click again hit I on your keyboard and select the pink this time so they're alternating so we're gonna go from purple to pink 
pink to purple. Okay, so now is where we create this kind of blend that we've got going on right here. So we're gonna come over here first and we're just gonna double click on this icon right here for our blend tool and you wanna make sure that smooth color is selected and then you can hit okay. Actually, before you do that, um, let's just grab our selection tool and we're gonna select this first word stacked and just hit Command C or Control C on a PC and we're just gonna copy it before we do anything with blending. Okay, now we're gonna come back to our blend tool and you're just gonna click on stacked, the pink one, and then click on the purple one and that's gonna create that really pretty gradient. Now hit V on your keyboard and they'll return you to your selection tool and then click anywhere so you're all deselected. And then you're gonna hit Command F or Control F on a PC, and that's just gonna paste that word right in front. But since it's already pink here, you can't see it very well, so with this selected, we're just gonna hit I on our keyboard and click on the purple one so it'll stand out more. So all of a sudden, we're getting this really cool multicolored gradient, which is looking like a long shadow. So I'm just gonna select all of this, just rubber band select, and we're gonna send it to the back so we can focus on the other words that are kind of being hidden because of the blend. So just right click, arrange, send it back, or you could use shift command open bracket or shift control open bracket on a PC as the keyboard shortcut. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna select our word first, command C or control C to copy, deselect, Come over to the blend, click on the blend, click on long purple, click on long pink. Now it creates the blend, hit V on your keyboard, click anywhere, and then hit Command F or Control F to paste that long word in front. Hit I on your keyboard, click on the pink area, and now it's pink. And now we can select all of this and use our keyboard shortcut to send it to the back. Okay, so I'm going to speed up the video and complete the exact same spe steps that we just did for the rest of this. Okay, so now we've got all of our type with a long shadow and it's all multicolored. So now we're gonna make a copy of this. So just rubber band select everything, hold Alt on your keyboard, click and drag, and while you're dragging, hold Shift and it'll keep it in a straight line. So we're just gonna leave this over here for now. But as you can see, I've kind of cropped it into a shape right here and if you'd like to do the same thing, select everything, hit Command G or Control G to group it, draw your shape that you want everything to kind of be locked into. So I'm gonna do a shape like this. And then you're gonna hit Command C or Control C on a PC to copy. And then you're gonna hit Command F or Control F on a PC to paste on top. And then you're just gonna hold Shift and click your grouping over here, right click, make clipping mask. And now it's there. And if you wanna change the color of this pink right here, just click on it and you can select any color off of your swatches palette or from your color palette if you'd like. Okay, so that's how to do a multicolored one. And now if we come over here and we want to have just a one color shadow kind of bleeding off the edge, this is all you need to do. So you just click on one of your blends over here and then you're gonna come up here and go Object, Expand, hit OK, and this is gonna divide it up into every little color that makes that smooth blend. And then you're gonna come over here to your Pathfinder palette, and if you don't see this, you can get to it by going Window, Pathfinder, and you're just gonna click on this little Unite icon right here. And it might take a, a second or two to merge them all together, but what's basically happening is it's all merging together to create one solid shape instead of all of these individual colored pieces that make up that blend. Okay, so now that it's all one solid color, we can change this to any color that we'd like. If we want it to be black, we can do that. And then we still have our word uh, set on top and we can change that to any color that we want. Okay, so we're gonna do this to all the other blends and then I'll be back after that's complete. Okay, so now that we have all of our long shadows being one color, we can select everything and we're just gonna lock it up in a shape just like we did over here. So I'm just gonna have this rubber band selected, Command G or Control G on a PC to group them together. Next, I'm just gonna grab this shape, 
hold alt, click, drag while you're dragging, hold shift. And we're going to place this where we want it in here, kind of like we did before. That looks pretty good. And this time I'm just going to create another copy of this gray box. I'm going to hit Command C or Control C on a PC and then hit Command F or Control F on a, a PC to paste it up on top. Then I'm going to hold Shift, click on my grouping over here, right click, make clipping mask. Okay, now that we have this one, I'm just going to make an entire copy of this. I'm going to rubber band select this entire thing, hold Alt, click, and as I'm dragging, I'm going to hold Shift to keep it straight. And now, if you want to go in and kind of just change the colors, you like this layout, but you want maybe more of a gradient look over here. So I've kind of got a reverse gradient. I go from light to dark here, and then this one's kind of a more rich color, and this goes to a lighter color with the typography. So since this is all grouped and locked up, the easy way to access each one of these shadows and words is just to hit A on your keyboard, and that's your direct select tool. You can see it's my arrow has... Um, white in the middle of it now and I can select everything individually by using this even though everything's grouped together so I can click on my word and hit I on my keyboard and then just click up here if I have color selected or I can grab them from my swatches palette over here and I can just go back and forth and you just want to make sure you get in the middle of the word if you get on the edge of the word it'll only edit that one letter but if I get in the middle since we created a compound path with this um, back at the beginning when we hit that command 8 shortcut that allows us to now click and select an entire word so I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard again and I'm just gonna select each of these and change the color and then for the the gray gradient that we've got going on I can do the same thing I'm just gonna hit a on my keyboard and I can select just the shadow and I grabbed this kind of gradient just by um, this little swatch area right here so I can go a light color and select this one and go for a darker color and kind of have my own made up gradient right here which is pretty cool okay so that's how to create stacked long shadow topography in illustrator if you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe i release a new design tutorial every single tuesday and don't forget to head on over to my blog every hyphen tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next week